Hey, what is happening, guys? It is so great to have you back here for Youth Night Live. It's going to be an awesome night. And it was an awesome Sunday this past Sunday, getting to see all of you face to face for Reunion Sunday. We've missed you so much, and it was so good to see you. Uh, don't forget to register for this next Sunday. Registration closes Friday at 7 p.m., so make sure your parents register you and your whole family. Uh, but tonight, tonight is going to be an awesome night. Uh, we are in week number two of our three-week series called The Big Three. And tonight, we are talking about prayer, uh, why to pray, how to pray, what to pray. It's going to be really good, so stick around for all of that. Make sure and share this on your Instagram, on your YouTube, on your Twitter on your Facebook, on your TikTok, your Kick, your, all your other social media apps. Do it on all of them so that everybody that you know in the entire world gets to see this awesome, awesome episode. Um, and before we go any further, uh, check this out to find out some information about this Friday night's event that we can't wait to see you at. Hey guys, I'm Addison. I'm Bailey. We just wanted to tell you about the awesome movie night we're going to have Friday. It's going to start at 7.30, so make sure you tell your parents so you can get here on time. All the festivities, like she said, will start at 7.30. So we're going to have horseshoes, cornhole, spike ball, and the movie will start at dark. So don't forget a blanket or a lawn chair. Hope to see you there. Doobie doobie doo, where are you? It's time for our game. Today we're going to be playing What's in the Box. It's round one and I'm up first. Okay, so we're going to see what's in the box, which is the game, the title of the game that we're playing. Okay, there's two things. They sound kind of squishy. Um, I'm thinking it's a water toy. I'm thinking it's a duck, a little ducky. Okay, um, like a little... Uh, is it a turtle? Turtles. I like turtles. Jonathan, you're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. Turtles. I like turtles. Is it a, a whale or a fishy? A goose. <laughs> um, it's not a turtle. So is it a, is it the Loch Ness Monster? Well, that's, is it uh, an alien? He's squishy. Um... A frog. It's a frog. No way! Crazy. She never would have gotten it. I never would have. It's round two, so let's see what's in here. You know, I can't even hardly reach. <laughs> it's furry. It's got eyes, right? Maybe. It's probably one of those like little stupid furry animal thingies. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> oh, it's ten nose. Is it a bear? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Round three. <laughs> Round three. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck is that? happening <laughs> it's so good to see you it is it is so good to be seen by you yeah. it was so good to see you Sunday yes. love seeing oh you my goodness, yes. hey man that last video oh, okay before we else. get into this that last video was so great I wish you guys could have been here for it yeah. um, but thankfully we were recording mm -hmm. and uh, to set that up we we told Elizabeth that Hunter was going to worldwide pets and uh, getting 
getting an animal for us and we hammed it up pretty good yeah. and uh we got oh, it good. Yeah. oh it was so great oh, and so yeah. thank you to elizabeth for that yes. also she will be dancing throughout the episode with the scooby-doo hat on <laughs> so you can check out her sweet dance moves there and on her TikTok. <laughs> talk <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what it was, and uh, she's in the room here with us, and so I'm um, sorry, we're, we're going to enjoy that for years <laughs> to come. That will be something that will be in the annals of history. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, we'll cut there. All right, so we are in the middle of this three-week series called The Big Three, and we are right in the middle. This week, we're talking about prayer. We'll get to that in a second, but last week... We talked about Bible reading. We talked about scripture, how important it is, how foundational it is to our walk with Christ. And if you didn't check that out, go back, click on the video, watch the video. We gave you some really cool steps on how to study the Bible. And then we gave you a Bible plan uh, that if you didn't do, click on it, read along with us. It was really great stuff. So check that out. It's only a seven day thing. It's not that, not that hard. Check it out. But tonight we're talking about prayer, okay? And we're gonna talk about some different things on what is prayer, how we pray, some different things like that. But prayer is not something that is just a Christian thing, right? right? There's people that are uh, Muslim or Hindu. There's all different religions um, that it's not just Christianity that prays. And then there's even people that aren't, they don't consider themselves religious at all, that they are prayers. They pray over their food or they pray when they go to the hospital or they they say they're praying whenever a natural disaster happens and things like that and and believe it or not this past sunday nascar started back up and if you didn't know this they pray before every nascar race and uh, we got a little clip to show you <laughs> of some of the interesting prayers that happen before nascar races yeah ladies and gentlemen please rise as our colors are presented by the united states army Nashville Recruiting Battalion. We ask you to remain standing for invocation delivered tonight by Joe Nels, pastor of Family Baptist Church in Lebanon, Tennessee. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You said in all things give thanks. So we want to thank you tonight for these mighty machines that you brought before us. Thank you for the Dodges and the Toyotas. Thank you for the Fords. And most of all, we thank you for Roush and Yates partnering to give us the power that we see before us tonight. Thank you for GM Performance Technology and the R07 engines. Thank you for Sunoco Racing Fuel and Goodyear tires that bring performance and power to the track. Lord, I want to thank you for my smoking hot wife tonight, Lisa. My two children, Eli and Emma, or as we like to call them, the little E's. Lord, I pray you bless the drivers and use them tonight. May they put on a performance worthy of this great track. In Jesus' name, boogity, 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 amen. That prayer that's a little weird. That was know? that was good. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it'd be, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it was a big hit. There yeah, NASCAR race. Yeah. So prayer is something that most people can imagine themselves practicing, right? Mm -hmm. But it can actually be kind of hard to define what prayer actually is. Sure. You know, like you said earlier, it's not a weird or foreign. Um, like yeah. subject, we talk about prayer often. It's a pretty common theme in sure. people's lives, but it can be hard when it comes down to it as to how do I do this, yeah. you know, or what oh, yeah. does that actually entail? Yeah. So that's something that we want to talk about tonight is what is prayer? And there's a super cool definition that yes, we kind of, we talked about this earlier that we kind of didn't realize, like we've never thought about it in this way. Right. So here it is. Prayer is our reply to God. I love that. Yeah. I, I love that So because so many times, like, whenever I'm praying, it's like, how do I start this out? What do I say? How yeah. do I not continue yeah. to say the same things to God over and over mm -hmm. again? When in reality, I'm just responding to what he's yeah. already said to me. Yeah, exactly. I and, love it. Yeah, and there's three ways that God has already started our conversation for us. And one of those ways is creation. Yeah, right off the bat, before anything was ever created, 
in creation, God began communicating with us yeah. through the things that he created. Yeah. He spoke us into existence. Everything he said, he said, let there be, and then it was. And then he looked at it and, and he looked at everything and said, it was good. And so God took the first step. He's the one that started it all. And so not only in creation did it happen, but it happened in scripture as well. Yeah, so in scripture, he inspired people to write his words to write everything that we would ever need to know about him and about living life with him and um he gave us this words he gave us this truth and um it's for us to reply we can read the word and we can uh like say those things in prayer yeah. when it like sometimes when i don't even know what to say yeah. in prayer i think of a scripture and i just start talking to god time. about the scripture you can't go wrong i mean yeah. how can it be wrong if god's the one that wrote it originally then yeah. how and it was inspired by god then how can it be wrong to say those prayers back to him and and remind ourselves of the promises that yeah. god's already told yeah. us Exactly. Yeah, so he, he not only did it in creation and through scripture, but he also did it in salvation. And uh, salvation was God's original plan from the very beginning. It wasn't a plan B. It, it isn't what he had to go back on after we chose to be sinful. It's It was the plan from the very beginning. And, and Jesus chose to go to the cross for us. He took our place. He took a step out and carried the cross for you and I. It, it should have been us on the cross. It should have been us taking that punishment, but yet Jesus went to the cross in our place. Yeah. How awesome is that? Yeah. We didn't Before we even knew it, before it ever happened, before we were even ever born, Jesus died on the cross for you and I. He started the conversation. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty awesome. big conversation it is. starter. <laughs> it is, it's a big conversation yeah. starter. So he speaks to us in creation, he speaks to us in scripture, he speaks to us in salvation. And I, I really can't point to one specific verse in the Bible that gives the definition. It doesn't necessarily say, this is what prayer is. I can look at several scriptures and see an outline. You know, uh, Jesus spoke the Lord's Prayer. We talked about that in a series a little while back. Um, you, you see different people in the Bible that wound up praying to God, David, and, and different people like that. Um, but every one of these in different instances were all replies back to God. God started the conversation. He pursued the people. He pursued you and I. And now it's our response to him. Yeah. Sometimes, like, when I was reading through this uh, before, I thought about it, and I was like, I wonder if God ever feels like we've left him on red. Yeah. You know? So, oh, yeah. when I heard that, like, it's our reply, I immediately thought of texting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely. And, like, I wonder if that's how God feels sometimes, is he's started this conversation. Yeah. He's given us his scripture. He's shown himself through creation. He's yeah. given us salvation. And then we don't ever do anything. Yeah, he's like, like are you there? Where are you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you get my text? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. how it is. And so um, when we pray, we're not just starting the relationship or um, starting the conversation with God. No, he's already put it into that's motion right. and we are replying to him. He's already given me salvation. He's created me, giving me the given me the Bible yeah. and scripture, all the tools that I need. So prayers are words and our replies to him. Have you ever felt the weight of the exploration? You know, the climb that is hard, your knees get scraped and heal over just in time to break your fall again. And then you breathe and you taste the mountain air and you hear the wind blow through the leaves. The climb is beautiful, the laughs, and even the cries speak deep as the journey goes on. But it is hard, and the step ahead looks solid, but so did the last one, as you remember wiping the mud from your face and your hands. It wasn't what you were expecting. Rough and jagged edges, thorns, rain, and hot sun, the endless bend in the climb. There are a few moments when it is actually quiet, the kind of quiet that allows you to hear yourself breathe, and the thoughts flow freely in your head. Let God be realized. He is here. He is with. He is not surprised by the trials before you. He promises them. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. 
the deep truths of Scripture can comfort and strengthen the soul, heart, and mind. It was once said, one of these cannot happen without the other. The truth of Scripture can instantly catch anxieties and ground them. You may have never expected the journey you've traveled, not the emotional pain, struggle, and eventually freedom, not the unrest of desires that were met with the desires of God alone, not the abundant peace and joy and discovery that has been found along the way. Be still. Know He is God. Remember not the former things. Behold, I am doing a new thing. I will make ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So look up. See the river's beginning. See the path that is starting to take shape. He has been with you in the desert. He has been with you in the wilderness. You have never been alone. So what does prayer offer? We've talked about what prayer is. Now let's look at what does prayer actually offer. And I think prayer offers a lot of really great things to us. But I want to look at two specific things tonight. We're going to talk about one of them right now. But uh, that is, is that prayer offers us a genuine relationship with God. I think if you look at people that go to church on Sundays that, uh, or that were even here this past Sunday, um, you look at them, there's a lot of people that were here because they wanted a real relationship yeah. with God. They wanted a genuine connection. They wanted to experience His presence. And that's why they were willing to get out and come. And their churches are loaded with people like that. And I think that's what prayer offers. I think that when you commit to praying, that you're you're committing to walking and, and going into a deeper relationship with God. And Jesus talks about, he gives us the Lord's Prayer. It's kind of a model prayer, different things that you could say in prayers and kind of how you would model your prayer life. Um, but before he actually gives us that example, he talks about um, the reason for us to pray. And it's found in Matthew chapter number six, In verse number five, it says this, it says, And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you go, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling on like pagans, for they think they will be heard just because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask Him. So Jesus is talking about three different groups of people. Hypocrites, pagans, and then churchgoers, people that want a real relationship with Him. And so I think it's important to look at each one of these. Yeah. So the first group that he talks about are the hypocrites, or in that day, he was talking about the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are people that had tons of scripture memorized. They knew. Yeah, they knew the, it. Yeah, they knew it all from front cover to back cover, yeah. from top of the scroll to the bottom of the scroll. <laughs> yeah. They knew it all. And um, they knew about the law. They knew about society. They knew how to be different than society and obey the law. And it, and it wasn't that um, they were too concerned with obeying the law it was their attitude behind yeah. it yeah. is that they wanted to be seen as good in other people's eyes and they discounted other people for not being like yeah. them and so Jesus calls them out and um, you know calls them hypocrites and um, they liked to be seen by other people in places of worship in the synagogue. They liked to be seen praying and um, doing those sorts of things. So it's a pride thing for them. Yeah. It was all about being seen. They wanted to make other people think that they were smarter and better and cooler than anybody else. And especially more than the second group, which is the pagans. And the pagans. Uh, they didn't know anything. No, they didn't believe in God. They didn't know the scriptures. They didn't know nothing about the scrolls or nothing like that. <laughs> and that was okay to them because uh, it, it was kind of like us doing the the program each and every week. They just kind of babbled on for a while. And that's kind of how I kind of feel like a pagan every once in a while, especially whenever we got to cut this a million times. Uh, but. but uh, that, that's how their prayers were. If you heard them praying, it was just like they were going on and on and on thinking that they needed to because that's all they knew, right? And not only that, they're the type of people that 
well, if, if I got cancer, I'd pray to God because what's it gonna hurt? Why not? Might as well pray, it's not gonna hurt me, and if God heals me or hears my prayer, then hey, good for me, right? And and Jesus saying, no, that's not it either. That's yeah. not the way to pray. Don't do it like the hypocrites. Don't do it like the pagans. You need to be like this last group. Yeah, so this last group are people that just want to have a relationship with God. They yes. pray because they want that relationship. Yeah. And not just because um, it's convenient or like, just because something bad is going on in their lives like the, it's the good the bad and the ugly everything in between they are sharing things with god replying to god and what he's already told them um so like for us to have a relationship with God, it includes prayer and us replying. So think about a friendship. You have all kinds of different seasons that you may encounter. There's like moments of great, awesome joy. There's yeah. funny moments. There's sad moments. There's sorrow. There's heartache, like hard stuff that you go through. And that's exactly like our relationship with God. There is different seasons of our lives, different ups and downs yes. and extreme joy and extreme pain sometimes. But he's there with us every step of the way. Yeah, no matter what season that you're in, yes. God is there for you. Yes, yeah. and there's a verse that talks about, verse eight of this chapter, talks about how your father knows what you need before you ask him. That comes with having a relationship, already having something established with God. Right. You know, because we've been getting to know each other, this back and forth conversation and this prayer life that I, that me and God have created, he automatically knows what's going on and what, what I need before I even ask it. And so that's what prayer is a lot of times, is not just asking God about, I need this, I yep. need that, but truly getting to know him and what he says about me. Yeah, it's not about getting more from God, it's getting more of God. Yeah. And that, that's what it all boils down to. Not a list of wants or needs. God already knows all those things. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to uh, put those things in your life and bless you with those yeah. things and help you out and heal those hurts and all those different things. Um, ultimately, when we pray, we're, we're getting more of God. We're finding out more about the character of God. We're, we're drawing ourselves closer to him. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Hey, one more reminder, don't forget the movie night. We're gonna be watching Scooby-Doo this Friday night on the parking lot at 7.30. The movie will start at dark, but before we'll have lots of games and activities, so we want to see you there. And during the movie, we will be eating Scooby snacks, but we want you to comment down below what your favorite movie snack is. Hope to see you there. Okay. Hey, before we let you go, we have three things that we want to share with you that may keep you from praying. So number one is selfishness. If we care more about our own happiness than holiness, which is being set apart and being with God, then prayer isn't likely a priority on our to-do list. If we care more about what we want and what we want to do, rather than spending time with God, prayer will just be ignored. It's important to remember that prayer isn't about us. It's about God. It's about Him revealing Himself to us and us learning more about Him. It's all about Him. Number two is busyness and laziness. So oftentimes, if we find ourselves super busy, it's hard to fit prayer into a schedule. And if we're also super busy, prayer doesn't look appealing on our daily list of to-dos sometimes. But it's so important that we make God a priority in our lives, that we set aside time scheduled with Him. If you're not a morning person, don't make it the morning time of your time to be with God. If you're a night owl, maybe do it at night or in the middle of the day on your lunch break, whenever you can. But don't make yourself so busy that God isn't a priority in your life. 
And two, laziness kind of goes right along with selfishness. If you're caring more about what you want and you just want to be lazy and lay around and do whatever, then prayer is probably not a priority on your to-do list either. So it's important to not make yourself too busy and sometimes you just got to make yourself do it. Number three is not knowing how. Maybe you want to know how to pray and you just don't know how. That's okay. It's important to realize that you don't know how first in order to get help. We encourage you to reach out to one of us. Reach out to your small group leader. Um, let us know that you need help and we would be more than willing to help you. And another good place to start in the Bible is Psalms. Psalms is a book all about prayer. I mean, it's songs about prayer, singing songs to God. It's every everything that you could imagine about prayer, sadness, um, joy, all the emotions in between. So Psalms would be a great book for you to check out. So prayer should be a priority in our lives because God should be a priority to our lives. And that is how we connect to him. So I, I just want to give you a quick method that you can use every day for how to pray. And it's ACTS, A-C-T-S. So A is for adoration. What is one thing that you love about God? Tell him. C is confession. So what is one thing that you did wrong today that you need forgiveness for? Tell him. Thanksgiving. T is thanksgiving. So what is one thing that you are thankful for? What has God done for you today that he deserves credit for? S is supplication. So what is one of your needs? What is something that you need God to do for you? So don't forget that. Acts, A-C-T-S. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Hey AGU family, our Assemblies of God missionaries are calling upon us for help. They need our prayers. First, they need our prayers for health and protection while they are overseas. Second, they need our prayers that God would use this time to usher a worldwide revival. And third, they need our prayers that the church would arise in prayer, repentance, and faith to proclaim Jesus fearlessly. So will you join us in lifting up our missionaries in our world? We are better together. Hey, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Hope that you enjoyed the episode and we can't wait to see you again next Tuesday night. Man, it is our prayer throughout this series uh, that these foundational principles in our walk with Christ would be something that you look back on uh, and that you build your life upon. Not only reading your Bible, but praying and coming together as a church. We are the church and we're going to talk about that uh, next week. Tuesday night, but let me pray for you tonight before I let you go. Lord, thank you tonight for the promise of conversation with you, Lord, that we can communicate with you no matter where we are, when we are, or what we're going through, God, we can call on the name of the Lord and you will be there and answer even while we're calling. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that promise. Touch the people that are watching this service tonight. I pray that you would bless them and go with them this week. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In your name we pray, amen. And we cannot wait to see you this next Tuesday night. Uh, but before then, this Friday night, man, it is going to be so awesome. We can't wait to watch Scoob with you right here on the VBFA parking lot. It's going to be an awesome night, and we will see you then. connect oh man and we can't wait to see you this friday night they're going to give you some details about that in just a second and a fly just attacked me get us up on the socials <laughs> now you got me thrown off man you got me thrown off but i can't know i know what to say <laughs> come on dude it's uh, come on Till then, our prayer for you is, is that you would in, increase your prayer life. That, uh, that is so stupid sounding. <laughs> hey.
stage. <laughs> one take wonder. Hey guys, we're back. Hey. We want to remind you that this Friday night at 7.30, there is going to be a movie night. Does that work? It would oh, have oh. Hey guys, we're back. Hey. We're gonna remind you to that tonight. <laughs> hey guys, we're hey. back. This Friday night, we're having a movie at 6, 7.30. Nope, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Six, <seven. laughs> row, row, right? <laughs> Yeah, it was a pride thing. It was <laughs> <laughs> I should admit it in my head. <laughs> hey! Hey, welcome what? back. Yeah, oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! What's happening? <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I made it too awkward, sorry. I made it... Hey! hey. <laughs> I'm gonna go turn the air on. Christian or not, it happens all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? What'd I say? <laughs> Like they can see me. <laughs> I realized I was Isn't that a real thing? Annals of history? Okay. I didn't know what you said. <laughs> okay. I got two tingles. <laughs> yeah, you danced. You literally did the Elizabeth. I, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah.